Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَعَتَصِمُوا Again, the imperative is in the plural form. This is a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cling, hold fast to the rope of Allah. Jami'a, all of you. What is the rope of Allah? There are many narrations regarding this particular ayah where some of the Sahaba said, it is Al-Jama'ah. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he had two interpretations to this ayah, to this word, Bihablillah. One of them is Al-Jama'ah. Stick to the Jama'ah. Jama'atul Muslimin. The other interpretation, which he also gives, along with others, is the Qur'an. وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ The rope of Allah is Al-Qur'an. As we have in this one hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ هُوَ حَبْلُ اللَّهِ This Qur'an that you have is the rope of Allah. وعن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كتاب الله هو حبل الله الممدود من السماء إلى الأرض. He says, the Messenger of Allah said, Kitab Allah, the book of Allah, is the rope of Allah stretched from the heavens to earth. So it is clear from these ahadith and others that the rope of Allah is the book of Allah. And this is common between all the Muslims. Can anyone deny that? We all say La ilaha illallah. We all say Muhammad Rasulullah and we all believe in the Quran. And if you hold fast to this Quran and you make the Quran the common thing between you and your fellow brother and sister, then you have something to talk about. Then you're not going to get tired of one another. Then you will be spending nights and days talking about something that the Prophet said regarding the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَا يَشْبَعُ مِنْهُ الْعُلَمَاءِ The ulama, the scholars, never get satisfied with the Qur'an. That's how powerful the Qur'an is. So, وَاَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Now, the second thing we have to do after we have built our faith and iman is to come together, unite. Unite through the Qur'an. Unite through the Qur'an. Kitabullah, Jamia, all of you, without any exception. Wala tatafarraku. Don't divide among yourselves. When you are united, you are strong. When you are divided, you are weak. Allah made you, wants you to be in charge of the world on His behalf. How can you fulfill your obligations and duties? When you are divided, when you can't get along with one another, Allah realizes that. And 1400 years later, you see this ummah divided. This ummah is fractured. A disease of what is called nationalism has overtaken them. Asabiyyah, tribalism. And this is precisely what the enemies of Allah and the enemies of Islam want to see. They want to see you divided. When your faith has weakened, they succeed. As long as you're strong, your iman is great, you have trust in Allah, they fear you. They don't dare come near you. But the moment they see you diverting from the akhirah to the pursuit of this world, now they know. Oh, there's only one suffering. Four or five people at Fajr. They are in deep slumber. They know that you are divided. And they will do whatever they can within their means to divide you and divide you and divide you even further so that you don't gain that strength to stand up for Allah. To stand up for justice, witnesses to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this concept of nationalism and asabiyyah, I mentioned it, it's not without any basis. It is true. You know, for 1400 years, 
or rather 1300 years plus until 1924. Although the Khilafah was crumbling from within, certain arms of the Khilafah were being chopped off. However, at least we had a Khalifa. Symbolically, we had a leader. In 1924, this institution of Khilafah finally came to an end. It was abolished no more. This symbolic unity and unification has gone. And what replaced this symbolic, I say symbolic unity because if you look at the history, we weren't really united as we ought to have been united as compared to when the Sahaba were united. But at least we had a leader. At least we had a leader. So what replaced this Khilafa? Secularism and the concept of nationalism. Before, all the Muslim lands were one land. You can go from Egypt to Yemen without stopping at any border. You can go to any place in the Muslim world. Kind of like what you have here today in America. You go from the state of Michigan to California. You cross so many states. You cross so many borders. Nobody tells you where you are going. That's how it was. But what did they do? The colonial powers chopped up our land. This is Turkey. This is Lebanon. This is Syria. This is... And what happened? Simultaneously, they have been putting into the minds of the people the concept of nationalism. Arab nationalism. 1917, I believe it was. Before the Khilafah was abolished. They were working on that way before Arab nationalism. I am an Arab. Take pride of who you are. Eventually, you know, those seeds took root and the people began thinking of themselves as nationals before they say we are Muslims and believers. And that is the root cause of our division today. You know, at the time when this was happening, at least Jama'at rose up, individuals, leaders rose up because they recognized the danger of this, but to no avail. You know, the Quran is for every time and every place, forever. So whenever you are in distress and you can find a solution, go back to the Quran. Like I said in the last sermon, who gives us the agenda? Who is qualified to give us our agenda? The Ummah, the Muslim Ummah. None other than the one who created us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He's saying, go, work on yourself, build your faith and your iman, revitalize that faith. And now all of you come together and do not divide. And do not divide. Because the nation that came before you to do exactly, precisely the same objective, the same goal, to establish the Torah, to establish the Injil. لَوْ أَقَامُوا التَّوْرَاةَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, only if they establish the Torah and the Injil. The Sharia of Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam. They were discharged with the same duties. What happened to them? Only if we learn from the past history of the Muslim Ummah. They were Muslim too. Their messenger was a Muslim, Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Only if we pay heed and pay attention to what happened. And the Prophet told us they were divided into 72 sects. 